2018 Porsche 911 GT2 RS First Drive, Delicate Brutality. Turbo S2 Slow? GT3 Not Sharp Enough? Step up to the 911 GT2 RS. Did anyone ever get out of a 911 Turbo S and proclaim it too slow? Or a GT3 and think it could do with being a bit sharper? Evidently so, Porsche answering those questions with this, the new GT2 RS. It's an intriguing mashup of each, with the promise of more of everything. The GT2's predecessors have quite a reputation, rightly or wrongly, its more recent RS iteration being dubbed the Widowmaker. That's in reference to its combination of massive power, and the potentially tricky handling that came with it. The GT2 RS appeals to a certain type of customer, then, Porsche's GT boss Andreas Reuninger saying they're a little bit more overt, demanding the very best performance, so the GT2 RS is deliberately loud, both visually and orally. Reuninger also admits it's a riposte to those commentators that complain the GT department has lost its focus on outright speed and instead has been building more purist-orientated cars like the 911R and manual GT3. To counter those arguments, the GT department took the GT2 RS to that track for a timed lap. The result was a 6-minute. 47.3 second lap, beating all production car comers and smashing even Porsche's own predicted times by some considerable margin. To allow that, the GT team has thrown everything at the GT2 RS and taken a bit out too. The engine is derived from the Turbo S3.8 liter B Turbo Flat 6, the chassis, aero, and weight saving more akin to the direction the GT3 takes. It's no simple mashup. Though. The GT2 RS has very much its own identity, its mixed parentage creating a monstrous hybrid, very much in the Marvel superhero sense, not the Toyota Prius one. You can't help but have an opinion of it, the GT2 RS thuggish, cartoonish track refugee appearance not exactly shy. It's all functional, though, those mini intakes, wings, and protuberances all doing one thing, creating speed. And lots of it. You could, of course, suggest that with 690 horsepower and 553 pounds feet of torque from 3.8 liter engine, dropping another 64 pounds is unnecessary. And you'd probably be right. Porsche doesn't quote any difference in figures for the 062 time, which, despite the limitations of channeling its prodigious grunt through the rear wheels, is achieved in 2.8 just seconds. It'll do double that. 0124 in 8.3 seconds, making this the quickest 911 you can buy. No, you'll want the satch pack for the magnesium wheels, not just because they look great, but also because they drop the unsprung masses. Given the GT2 RS effectively runs a 911 cup car suspension with a Nurburgring setup, that is a very good thing. The satch pack also brings carbon fiber suspension elements. Among the already fully ball-jointed setup, a carbon fiber roof and hood, carbon fiber shift paddles, and a titanium roll cage. The standard interior is bright red and black, like Dracula's coffin, only in Alcantara. It is so colored because about 80% of 997 GT2 RS customers specified their car that way, though you can, of course, specify it with subtler hues. Do that. And if you're ticking option boxes you might as well have the chrono pack, which adds some functionality to the display screens if you're intent on measuring your lap times using Porsche's Track Precision app. There's no push to pass mode switch on the steering wheel because, really, with 690 horsepower at your disposal, everything's already dialed up to 11 all the time anyway. That it is fast comes as no surprise, really. The engine's huge output is delivered forcefully, it punching with grimace-inducing pace from 2,000 revolutions per minute to around 5,000 revolutions per minute, before and after which it is merely shockingly quick. Helping produce this power are water spray-cooled intercoolers, a titanium exhaust, and revised internal components to cope with the flat 6's significantly increased output. 
there's little perceptible lag, this engine's turbocharged nature meaning it runs out of revs about 2000 revolutions per minute quicker than its naturally aspirated 4.0 liter GT3 relation. But this B Turbo 6 is a responsive, immediate thing. Shifting gears is done via Porsche's 7 speed PDK dual clutch gearbox. PDK is quicker, so it's fitted as standard, the shift's instantaneous. The paddles never second guessing or denying you your decision, unless you're particularly daft. Just try to resist the temptation on any drive to not do a launch lawn troll start, the way the GT2 RS catapults down the road when doing so being hilariously addictive. It's a vocal engine for a modern turbocharged Porsche, though it lacks the intense, singing highs of its 4.0 liter GT3 cousin. It's bassy, deeper tone notes aren't as rousing. But what they signal is ridiculous, any gear pace. In that regard, the 911 GT2 RS is up with its contemporaries like the Ferrari 488 GTB and Lamborghini Huracan performant against the clock, though it doesn't quite manage to achieve the outrageous mid-range effervesce of the freakishly quick McLaren 720S. The ride is taut, but there's real control, the GT2 RS riding with sophisticated composure allowing you to really enjoy the huge performance on offer. There's a wealth of grip from the Michelin Sport Cup 2 tires, traction as well mighty, though there's the suggestion of playfulness when you start pushing a bit harder. What is so beguiling is the steering, it's right up there with the best setups on a modern Porsche. There's decent weighting to the wheel, the response sharp, accuracy unfailing. Aided by the rear axle steering, the GT2 RS's nose is about as faithful on turn in as you'll get in a modern, road-going 911. Combine that brilliant steering with the chassis ability on UK roads, and it's not the performance of the GT2 RS that's the highlight of the experience, but the ability to exploit it. In that regard, it's a sizable shift for the GT2 RS, and not an unwelcome one. If you're in the marketplace for a GT2 RS, it's inconceivable that you've not already tried to get one, and if you're still pondering the purchase decision, then yes, of course you should buy it. Only drive it, enjoy it. Please, don't stick it in the garage with no miles on it while you wait for its value to double. You've no longer got the excuse that it's a little bit too much of a handful, either, as the new GT2 RS adds control and finesse to its brutal power.